good morning friends today we will cover about spark rdd we will give a very high level overview of what spark rdd is so rdd stands for resilient distributed data set and it is the fundamental data structure of apache spark which are an immutable collection of objects immutable means that it cannot be changed the state cannot be changed once it's created and uh, it also computes on the different nodes of the cluster each and every data set in spark rdd is logically partitioned across many servers many worker nodes so that they can be computed on different nodes of the cluster so rdd you can we can treat it as like a data storage uh, a data structure which is immutable and whenever we create an rdd for example we have got a big data of say a text file which is uh, in huge uh, like number of terabytes of uh, file and we are loading that data into uh, into into spark so spark will at, at, at behind it will create rdds and that rdds would be logically partitioned across several nodes like this it depends on the data that how big, how big the data is and as i know that each block of data by default is uh, 128 mb accordingly the spark will divide it uh, into various partitions like this and spread it across worker nodes and this will be all corresponding to one rdd now the reason that why it is being done it will be explained now now rdd stands for resilient right fault tolerant resilient means fault tolerant and is capable of rebuilding data on failure the term resilient defines the ability that generates the data automatically or data rolling back to the original state when an unexpected calamity occurs with the probability of data loss this is why we are replicating it across various nodes because each of the executed nodes will have a copy of it and whenever there is any any issue or any problem uh, then rdd can be uh, rebuilt from the from the other worker nodes or from the logged transformations other feature is that are the other d stands for here is distributed is this uh, distributed data among the multiple nodes in a cluster as we can see here and the data set collection of partitioned data with values so these are all partitioned data for an rdd now the data written into rdds is partitioned and stored into multiple executable nodes if an executing node fails in the run time then it instantly gets back from the next executable executable node RDDs can store structured, unstructured, and semi-structured data. So this property of being resilient by logically dividing into several partitions across several nodes, worker nodes, and whenever one executor node fails, it can always recover from the another executor node. This makes it resilient, and this is the most important feature of RDD. Now let's go to the main features of RDD, which makes it so uh, so efficient and performance tough. other than than the previous data structures so the first way is that it has got in memory computations rdd always by default it uh, does all the computations in memory as opposed to previous map reduce which was there in um, in apache hadoop systems map reduce always used to have disk uh, io for doing its perform uh, its operations but rdd has is uh, is much more advanced it always use in memory computations avoiding all those disk ios and other network ios related issues making it very very fast the concept of in memory computations takes the data processing to a faster and efficient stage where the overall performance of the system is upgraded another way that uh, we can see is that it has got distributed collection of data and cacheable which means that the resultant rdds are always persistable and re reusable besides having everything in memory it always keeps uh, it makes the data redundant by making a copy of it and persist it on the disk and it's always cacheable so that in any case the data is never lost if one of the worker nodes fails the third property is that it is lazily evaluated just think about it right that we have got a big data very very big data and we can only perform some actions on it uh, only when it's needed if we are just doing some like mapping or filtering without uh, any uh, actions involved so in that case it's uh, spark does is like uh, it always waits for the final action the terminal operation only then all those perform uh, transformations or action are performed after that it's very much like java stream api java stream api has got a similar like uh, ter terminal operation before that uh, it doesn't do anything 
only when a terminal uh, terminal operation is encountered by the streams only then the previous uh, functions or operations are performed so the term lazy evaluation says the transformations are applied to the data in rdd but the output is not generated immediately it waits for any action instead the data in the applied transformations are logged this is a very important point because it is logged that's why it is fault tolerant that it can always recover and reconstruct those rdds from this logged information so that's come to the our next point is fault tolerant if there is a loss of data the system can roll back to its original state by using the logged transformations as we just discussed now the another important property is uh, about uh, rdd is that it's avoids is uh, it can we can do uh, parallel operation because whole data is partitioned right so as we discussed here the rdd has been partitioned across with, uh, several worker nodes so by parallel operation it is a crucial unit of parallelism in spark rdd by default the number of partitions created is based on our data source i mean spark will do it automatically and this cause some default behavior based on the size of the data it will create a number of partitions but we can also override it we can even decide the number of partitions we wish to make using custom partition functions so we can always override it uh, by uh, changing the number of uh, default partitions and we will learn, uh, learn this uh, in a, in our future tutorials that um, that how to do it there are several uh, ways to override the default behaviors another power property is that immutability data defined retrieved or created cannot be changed once it is logged into the system in case if we need to access and modify the existing rdd we must create a new rdd by applying a set of transformation functions on to the current or preceding rdd it's very much like a string variable in java that is a string as you know that is immutable and whenever we add, uh, apply a concat operation or any operation it will always create a new string it will not um, manipulate the modify the original string because it's immutable the similar concept goes with rdd it's immutable now we have also got this coarse grained operations the user can apply transformations to all elements in data sets through map filter or group by operations which means that the whole set of uh, the data can be operated by some one single uh, operations like map filter or group by now it uh, the last feature and the very other important feature about uh, rdd is that it, it has the ability to use various data sources so the earlier map reduce it was able, only able to use the files from hdfs file system uh, but rdds can source the data from across very very uh, various formats like it can be a text file it can be a csv json zip file or like dot gz file can also be like uploaded or the data from Mong from NoSQL like MongoDB, Cassandra, from AWS S3 buckets, from MySQL, PostgreSQL, SBase, etc. There are very, very uh, different various formats of uh, file of data which can be sourced into RDD. Now, as we have seen the features of RDD, let's see that what kind of operations we can do on 